Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you are in the prog corner, where today on the channel, we are going to be ranking the 25 best, yes, solo albums. You know, if you include soundtracks, live albums, and collaborations, there's like over 175 titles to choose from here. Rick Wakeman alone has like 81, uh, if you include soundtracks and the stuff he's done with his son, Adam. John Anderson's got like 15 solo albums. That doesn't include uh, the stuff he's done with John and Van Gellis. Steve Howe's got like 26, if you include the two he did with his son, Virgil. Patrick Mraz, he's got like 11, not including the two he did with Bill Bruford, which are awesome. Uh, Trevor Rabin's got like hundreds of soundtracks out there. His first three solo albums don't count because he was not a member of Yes yet. But uh, there's a couple solo albums that do count. Bill Bruford put out three amazing albums after he left Yes, and then the stuff with Earthworks. Peter Banks had four. Alan White had that great solo album. He also did that album with uh, Levin, Torn, and White. Not going to be including that. Jeff Downs, man, he's got the DBA, the Downs Braid Association. Not going to include that, but we are going to include the new dance orchestra because that was primarily him. Even Trevor Horn's got solo albums out. Um, Rick Wakeman and John Anderson did The Living Tree. Not a solo album, so we're not including that. Also in the Yes Camp, you've got these like spinoff bands like Circa that had members like Billy Sherwood and Alan White and Tony Kay in the fold. Arc of Life more recently, he's got uh, John Davison, Jay Shellen, Billy Sherwood, John Davison, I said already, Jimmy Hahn, and uh, Dave Kersner, the only one not actually affiliated with Yes directly. Billy Sherwood, speaking of him, he's got like nine solo albums out. So there's just a ton of material to get to. I'm going to rank the top 25. Um, the last two that uh, I cut from the list really hurt. Rick Wakeman's uh, Out There from 2003 and Steve Howe's Spectrum. That was a really good album. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the top 25. Yes, solo albums at number 25. It's Billy Sherwood and Citizen. This dropped in 2015. And it comes off the heels of Billy's... Uh, the Prog Collective albums that he's been doing, and it's mostly the same cast of characters, and wow, what a Rolodex Billy Sherwood's got. Colin Moulding from XTC, Alan Parsons, John Davison, uh, Steve Hackett, Steve Morris, Rick Wakeman, Tony Kay, Jeff Downs, Patrick Moraz, Jordan Rudez, Chris Squire, Jerry Goodman. Yeah, yeah, they're all on this album, and it's even got a Stanley Decker album cover. It's actually really good. At number 24, it's Trevor Rabin's Jacaranda from 2012. He did drop one after uh, his involvement in Yes in the 80s, but that had a real 80s kind of vibe to it. This one here is much more jazz fusion. Uh, it's got Lou Molino, the drummer from AARW on here. Uh, Tal Wilkenfeld plays bass on here. It's a cool record. If you like jazz fusion and you like uh, Trevor Rabin's singing style and his guitar playing, you'll probably like this. At number 23, we talked about it briefly. It's Alan White's Ramshackled. Yeah, after Relayer, the boys in Yes decided they were going to do, uh, well, I'm an Ergonin, always a big uh, supporter, president of Atlantic, so they wanted to do five solo albums, and this was one of them that came out there between Relayer and going for the one, 1976 it was dropped, and this is people that Alan White had worked with in the past, and bands like Griffin, Alan Price set, and Simpsons Pure Oxygen. And uh, you do get Steve Howe and John Anderson on one song, Spring the Song of Innocence. It's the only thing that sounds even remotely like Yes, but it's actually a really cool little album. At number 22, it's the most recent solo album from Steve Howe called Love Is. This was a totally different direction for Steve and his solo albums. Uh, it's all him, his bro, uh, his son Dylan on drums, and uh, half these songs are instrumental, half of them have vocals. The vocal songs uh, have uh, Steve Howe and John Davison singing together, so it's really cool hearing Steve singing lead and John singing backup, but it's a great record. I love it, and it definitely pointed the way to the mature relationship and songwriting partnership that's going on in Yes these days. At number 21, it's Tony K and the End of Innocence. This thing dropped 
in 2021 on the 20th birthday anniversary rather of uh you know the 9-11 thing so this whole album is about 9-11 Oddly enough, this is Tony K's only solo album after all these years in the business, working with Bowie, working with Yes, working with Badger and Flash and Detective, and Badfinger, uh, and it's really cool, and it's even got the Roger Dean album cover on it at number 20. It's John Anderson's uh, sophomore solo album, Song of Seven from 1980. I hated this album for a long time because it was not Elias of Sun Hillow. Doesn't sound anything like Elias. It's a bunch of pop songs, but he's got some good people on here. Ronnie Leahy, uh, Ian Barnson, R.I.P. Ian, who'd uh, played with the Alan Parsons Project and a lot of other people. Clem Clemson from uh, Coliseums on here. Chris Rainbow and Morris Pert from Brand X on drums. It's a great band, but I'm not a big fan. A lot of these songs are basically Tormato rejects. Songs that weren't good enough for Tormato ended up here. And that's why it's pretty low on the list here at number 19. It's Steve Hobby Beginnings, another one of those. The five solo albums that came out after Relayer. And uh, it's marred by really bad vocals. Everybody knows this. But you do get Bill Bruford and Patrick Mraz on here. And you also get two dudes... Uh, uh, you get Alan White, too, Bruford, Mraz, and White. Two dudes from Griffin, Graham Taylor and Dave Oberly, make an appearance on here. Oddly enough, this album hit number 22 in the UK, number 63 in the US, but his second solo album would be much, much better. At number 18 is John Anderson's Change We Must from 1994. Yeah, over half this album is reworkings and reimaginings of older material, like State of Independence from uh, The Friends of Mr. Cairo, Hearts from 90125, a couple songs from uh, John's In the City of Angels uh, solo album, Candle Song from John and Vangelis' Page of Life. But it was nice to hear John Anderson sounding a little bit like John Anderson. It, it sounds ethereal and, you know, very interesting. A lot of orchestration going on here. Um, sounded more like uh, John than a lot of his earlier stuff at number 17. Let's go to 1976's No Earthly Connection. What a great record this was. And I remember buying it and, you know, the album cover is all weird, but you get this weird like cylinder thing that you... Put on the album cover and all of a sudden it looks normal again. This album hit number 9 in the UK, number 67 in the US, and you've got Ashley Holt. Yeah, a lot of people don't like his vocals, but he's on this album. Roger Newell on bass, Tony Fernandez on drums, and John Dusterville on guitar. This was the last... Uh, record that Rick put out as the English rock ensemble for a little while, but uh, I really love it. I think it's a cool record. At number 16, how about Steve Howe's third solo album, Turbulence, from 1991? It's basically all Steve, uh, Bill Bruford, and uh, dude from uh, Ultravox, uh, Billy Curry. I guess the drummer from Saxon plays on one song here. This is all instrumental. This is what Steve Howe needed to do. Uh, nobody wants to hear him sing and having guest vocals and stuff. Can only take you so far. I just love this record. Fantastic. At number 15, it's John Anderson's 1,000 Hands. Yeah, this thing began in 1990. It was supposed to be called uh, Uzlot. Uh, Michael Franklin finally got involved sometime around like... 2016. He's the same cat that uh, did that wonderful Robbie Steinhardt solo album, not in Kansas anymore. But the list of guests that John Anderson brings to bear on this album, as the title might indicate, you got Ian Anderson and Jean Luc Ponty and yeah, Steve Morris, Chick Corea, Larry Coriel, Rick Derringer. Uh, Chris Squire, Alan White, and of course, the last song will probably be the one most people remember. It might be the very last time Steve Howe and John Anderson are ever heard on vinyl together. Just such a great, sweet little moment. And number 14, it's Jeff Downs and the New Dance Orchestra. The first album uh, called The Light Program dropped in 1987. Yeah, this is all Jeff playing all the instruments, and yeah... 
the bass and the drums and stuff are all generated by keyboards. So the program keyboards are, you know, one thing, but when you're doing program drums, you know, it does sound a little dated, but it's really good. The melodies are super strong here. I actually really like this album a lot. I just listened to it again the other day. I'd totally forgotten about it when I was putting this list together. I'm like, man, I got to include that one in here. All right, at number 13, it's Rick Wakeman's Criminal Record, 1977. Found Rick uh, rejoining his bandmates in Yes. So you've got Chris Squire and Alan White on this thing. This came out right after Going for the One. In fact, I think it started recording right after the recording sessions for Going for the One wrapped up. And uh, this is more like what we want from Rick Wakeman. We're not a big fan of vocals in Rick Wakeman's records, are we? But uh, this thing kind of services almost as more of a proper follow-up to uh, the Six Wives than uh, any of the other things he dropped in the interim. And uh, you could tell that the end was nigh because this thing only got up to 128 in the U.S. At number 12, let's stay with Rick Wakeman and the myths and legends of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table from 1975, his second proper studio album, although Journey to the Center of the Earth you know, came out. Uh, between this and uh, Six Wives. But that was a live album. Am I going to include it or not in this ranking? You're going to have to see. This is uh, the New World Orchestra with the English Chamber Choir. I love this album. It hit number two in the UK, number 21 in the US. This album will probably be best remembered because... Uh, Rick had some dates scheduled at Wembley to uh, support this album, but they were doing some kind of ice spectacular. So Rick just totally rejigged the whole thing and did uh, the, the myths and legends of King Arthur on ice. One of the most legendary uh, concerts in the history of rock music. And you've got Gary Pickford Hopkins from Wild Turkey and the great Ashley Holt from War Horse on vocals here. You get both of them. At number 11, oh yeah. Yeah, it's Bill Bruford's first solo album, uh, Feels Good to Me, from 1978. And this was right before uh, he joined UK, but he's got Alan Holdsworth with him. He's got Jeff Berlin with him, Dave Stewart, Annette Peacock sings here. Um, yeah, he followed this up with a couple more great, great albums and then kind of went into all, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff, you know, doing session work and and the UK stuff, the Earthwork stuff. Um, Beelzebub is on this album, boys and girls. That's all you need to know. And now we're into the top 10. Yes, solo albums at number 10. It's John Anderson's third solo album, Animation from 1982. This definitely saw him you know, creeping into the 80s. You hear the bad 80s production throughout this, but the songs are actually really good here. Chris Rainbow returns. Uh, he... he You'll find him singing on some Camel records. David Sanchez from uh, Bruce Springsteen's band. Simon Phillips on drums from Toto. And, of course, Clem Clemson from Coliseum. Great lineup. Really good album. I like it a lot. Uh, he kind of righted the ship after Song of Seven here for sure. At number nine, it's the Cape Crusader, Rick Wakeman, Journey to the Center of the Earth from 1974. Yeah, I'm including it. I know it's a live album, but I don't care. It's important. It's a canonical album for sure. This record hit number one in the UK, number three in the US, and uh, reportedly a big, big reason why Rick left Yes was uh, when this thing hit number one, he realized, I don't need Yes, man. They need me more than I need them. Of course, this album is the one with the London Symphony Orchestra with the David Hemmings narration. Um, yeah, you got both Gary Pickford Hopkins and Ashley Holt singing on this, but it's the narration that really drives this whole thing, and the music therein ain't that bad either. At number eight, how about Peter Banks? Two Sides of Peter Banks from 1973. Flash had run its course already over the course of three albums, one of which did very well in the U.S. The other two bombed, uh, and a bunch of touring in the U.S. just never really paid off. Man, Peter Banks, such a hard luck dude. But this, his first solo album, is just phenomenal. You got Jan Ackerman from Focus all over this thing. Steve Hackett and Phil Collins from Genesis is on here. Uh, John Wetton from King Crimson's on here. It's all instrumental and it's all awesome. I just really enjoy this. At number seven, 
It's the Red Planet from Rick Wakeman, dropped in 2020. Apparently, all these songs were, you know, in a hard drive file that Rick Wakeman had on his computer labeled ARW. So these were clearly songs that were slated for the aborted Anderson, uh, Raven Wakeman thing. Uh, they might do it again, but I doubt they'll ever drop any material because Obviously, Wakeman used all his best material for this, man. It's just incredible. Six songs, all instrumental, all amazing. Rick's joined by Lee Pomeroy on bass, Ash Sohn on drums, and David Colquan on uh, guitar. It's just incredible. I love it. At number six, it's Bruford's second album, One of a Kind, from 1979. These were songs that, well, at least some of them were songs that were supposed to be on uh, the next UK album. But when Bruford and Holdsworth left UK, uh, they brought some of that material with them. So this is definitely a stronger album than the first Bruford. Uh, the Sahara of Snow and Forever Until Sunday were both songs UK were actually performing live at the time. You've got Hell's Bells, which was a national health song, a band that both Dave Stewart and Bill Bruford were part of. Just a phenomenal jazz fusion record. I love it. Now we're into the top five. At number five, boys and girls, it's the Steve Howe album from 1979. Oh, this is a marked improvement over his debut. He's singing a lot less. Yeah, he sings on one song here, but it's all right. It doesn't sound that bad. You got Claire Hamill singing on another song, and that's it for the vocals. The rest is all instrumental. You got Bill Bruford, Alan White, Patrick Moraz, even Clive Bunker from Jethro Tull's on here. Andrew Jackman, who worked with Chris Squire uh, on his solo album, is also on this one. Just a great, great record. At number four, it's Patrick Moraz and his debut solo album, The Story of I from 1976. What a cool, cool album. I remember when I bought those solo albums after Relayer. This was the one that really got me scratching my head. I knew there was a lot of greatness on here, but all that Brazilian uh, percussion and you know all that Latin American uh, rhythm just really going over my head. I didn't understand it. I like dancing now a lot, but uh, the rest of the album I couldn't really figure out. Man, the older I got, the more I realized this record is absolutely amazing. It's so complicated, so intricate. I can almost imagine I'm at er Erdogan over there in the Atlantic uh, offices in New York. Here you go, man. I got my solo album for you. And you knew this thing wouldn't sell. I mean, there's nothing commercial about this record. It's just amazing. I love it. Now we're at the top three. And honestly, boys and girls, you know, Flip a three-sided coin here because I've got three Yes solo albums that I absolutely adore, that I rate as perfect, 10 out of 10 records. Let's see how I did it. You know, I probably, like I said, could have flipped the coin, but at number three, I've got Rick Wakeman, The Six Wives of Henry VIII, his classic debut from 1973. He was solidly in Yes at the time, and... Uh, he had apparently had a record deal with AM via his old band Straubs to do some solo work. He took advantage of it. Boy, did he ever. This thing hit number seven in the UK, number 30 in the US. It's got members of Straubs, members of Yes. It's just amazing. You know the album, boys and girls. And at number two, hmm, I'm sorry I did a poll on my community tab. Uh, over the weekend, and this one was the clear winner. I've got it at number two. It's Chris Squire, Fish Out of Water. Yeah, obviously the most Yes sounding of any uh, of the Yes solo albums. It definitely could have, you know, you put a little bit of John Anderson and Steve Howe in there. This is a Yes album. It would have felt real natural after going for the one and Tormato and, you know, that kind of stuff. It would have felt natural after Relayer. It's just a great album. These songs are timeless. It definitely could have been a Yes album. You got Andrew Jackman, you know, who was uh, Chris's a childhood friend doing all the orchestrations and stuff. Uh, it's just such a pleasure to hear Chris Squire and Bill Bruford, that rhythm section, together one last time, one more go around. And uh, then Patrick Mraz fills it out with some great stuff. This album hit number 25 in the UK, number 69 in the US, and it is just amazing. But I've got one that I like even better. You guys know what it is. 
At number one is John Anderson, Elias of Sun Hill, 1976. I believe this was the last of the solo albums. John had to work on it a long, long time. The story goes, boys and girls, he recorded this all by his little old lonesome in a garage in Long Grove in Sear Green somewhere in Buckinghamshire with just him and a guy named Mike Dunn uh, doing all the tape ops and the producing, the engineering and stuff. Uh, there's no way Vangelis is involved in this, right? Mm. Well, I don't know. There was a letter that was sent, a cease and desist letter that was sent uh, to Van Gellis from his record label, RCA, at the time, telling him, you know, if you're on this record, uh, we're going to sue the pants off you. So, of course, uh, the company line has been that, yeah, John did all this all by himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure he did. If that's true, then how come no other John Anderson record sounds anything like this? How come no other John Anderson record is nearly half as good as this one, man? This this is a perfect album from start to finish. I absolutely love it. John was so wrapped up in this, he wouldn't even let his wife hear it. Uh, he wouldn't even let Ahmet Erg Erdogan hear it. Uh, he just dropped it and said, this is it. Apparently, the story is all based on the album cover of Fragile that Roger Dean did for the band. Roger was busy, so John ended up using David Fairbrother Rowe to do the artwork, and it's just absolutely incredible. He also did Naz Nazareth's Hair of the Dog, so obviously a great, great artist. But hey, there you go, boys and girls. That was the top 25 Yes Solo albums, and uh, you heard it here first. Anyway, yeah, you thought we were done with the Yes con. Content. Boy, oh boy, just you wait and see. We're not anywhere as close to being done with the S content. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you soon. I'm Scott. You wandered into the Prague Corner, you poor, unfortunate souls, but you made it through. You survived. Here we are. Anyway, peace in the Middle East. God save the king and free Tibet. I'm out.